Thank you, Jora. It's very exciting to be here. You could all hear me, right? Okay, great. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Okay. Uh, I'm talking about, uh, <laughs> well, I'll be telling you what I'm talking about, but it has to do with Iranian Jews. So today, I'm here to talk about the history of the Persian Jewish community from integration in Iran to exile and diaspora in the United States. Persian Jews are one of the oldest continuous Jewish religious minorities in the world. Jews have resided in Persia for over 2,700 years, beginning in 586 BCE when Nebuchadnezzar exiled thousands of Jews from Judea to Babylonia. When King Cyrus overthrew the Babylonians, he permitted the Jews to return to Jerusalem in 539 BCE to rebuild their temple. Half returned to Jerusalem and half remained in Persia. Now we're gonna fast forward a bit. Before the Islamic Revolution in 1979, Iran's Jewish community was estimated to be between 80,000 and 100,000 individuals. According to the most recent census conducted in 2016, the remaining Jewish population in Iran numbered 9,826 Jews. As historian Amnon Netzer contends, and as we'll talk about today, the Jewish memory of Iran is one of exile and integration, persecution and flourishing. Netzer writes, even despite the rather difficult entanglements of Jewish existence, there's, there is still a positive historical memory of the distant past. Consciousness of the exile, the place of Cyrus in Jewish history, and Megillat Esther, the story of Purim, all constitute milestones in this historical memory. The Jewish community attributes its beginnings to the Babylonian exile. The end to a Jewish presence in the land of Israel was accompanied by the historical memory of integration into Iranian society, economic prosperity, and cultural flourishing. Consciousness of the positive past of Jewish presence in Iran was not at all undermined by the difficulties of the Khomeini period. Today's talk will begin with a discussion of the history of Jewish integration and anti-Semitism within the context of political developments in 20th, 20th century Iran. We will start with exploring integration during the Pahlavi period, followed by, the, by persecution and exile during the Islamic Revolution. We will briefly look at how these dynamics shaped Iran's Jewish community today and its diaspora communities in the United States. I'll close, with a I'll close with a case study from my research on the Mashadi Iranian Jewish community in New York that illustrates how exile created a pivotal moment for redefining Iranian Jewish identity, memory, and history. So we'll start with the Pahlavi era. Judaism's era of integration in Iran was inaugurated by revolution. In the early 20th century, the British facilitated a military coup that brought Reza Khan, an officer in the Cossack Brigade, to power in 1921. Supported by the British, he overthrew the Qajars in December of 1925. This era marked the onset of new political, ideological, and institutional trends. The Pahlavi era marked a separation of the state from the Islamic religion and an increase in Jewish integration. Reza Shah embarked on a modernization project whereby men and women were forced to remove their ethnic and Islamic clothing. He directly opposed the Islamic Shiite clergy and significantly diminished their power by undermining their hegemony over institutions such as education and family law. By the late 1920s, Jew civil status became equal to Muslims, and all Jewish schools were now required to implement the Shah's standardized educational curriculum. In this period of Iranianization, whereby the Shah sought to bring all of his subjects under his central authority, the teaching of Jewish subjects declined sharply. Jews in Iran were in the beginning stages of the assimilation process. In the 1930s, anti-Semitism began to rise alongside integra integration. Reza Shah increasingly looked to Germany for inspiration in his nation-building project, since the Germans had no history of imperialism in Persia. 
Germany had become Iran's principal partner in trade by 1937, and ongoing German influence in Iran contributed to the spread of ethno-national anti-Semitic sentiments. Though this wave of anti-Semitism proved deadly at times, including a notable 1946 blood libel pogrom in Mashhad, anti-Semitism was never state-sponsored, and state actors often contravened Germany's genocidal goals. Iran declared itself neutral on the eve of World War II. Some state actors actively worked to protect Jews. An Iranian diplomat in Vichy, France, Abdul Hossein Sardari, saved the lives of 2,000 Iranian and European Jews. Iran also welcomed and housed about 3,000 Jewish-Polish refugees during World War II. Beginning in August 1953 and lasting till the late 1970s, Iranian Jews experienced an unprecedented era, era of freedom. Following the 19, 1953 coup that reinstated Mohammad Reza Shah, Reza Shah's son, to power, Iranian and American interests became closely aligned. Mohammad Reza Shah embarked on a second modernization project that included legal and civil reforms that benefited minorities and women without using the brute force that his father employed. Iran during this period had unofficial dealings with Israel and Americans had obtained diplomatic immunity in Iran. By 1965, British, Israeli, and American intelligence officers trained members of the National Iranian Security Organization called the Savak. The Savak began monitoring and quashing domestic and expatriate dissent. By the 1970s, the United States and Mohammad Reza Shah were strong allies, and Iran was neutral to the Arab-Israeli conflict, supplying Israel with oil. By the 1970s, in the capital of Tehran, social barriers were breaking down between all ethnic groups. Jews lived in affluent neighborhoods among Muslim neighbors, and they became more economically and socially integrated. By the time the revolution began, particularly in Tehran, Jews were overwhelm overwhelmingly a highly educated middle class. And I quote, 2,000 Jewish students were enrolled in university, 10 times the national average. Two of the 18 members of the Royal Academy of the Sciences, 80 of the 400 university lecturers in Tehran alone, and 600 of the 10,000 physicians in Iran were Jews. The, the economic status of Jews in Iran improved dramatically compared to the past. By 1968, Iran already had the wealthiest Jewish community in all of Asia and Africa. By 1979, the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of Jews were middle class. 10% were wealthy and another 10% were impoverished." End quote. Despite the high level of integration in Tehran, traditional religious social structures continued to exist as part of daily life, particularly outside of Tehran. Jews still spoke Judeo-Persian, lived in Jewish quarters, and were, women were married off at younger ages. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter announced that countries that violated human rights would be deprived of American aid. The Shah, ceding to US pressure, began freeing the press. In response to a more relaxed political environment, Iran Iranian human rights activists, intellectuals, and students abroad started staging large-scale demonstrations against the Shah. In November, the Shah visited Washington and faced massive protests aired on TV in Iran. Members of religious minorities, including Jews, supported the Shah's overthrow. As the protests accelerated, the country divided along religious lines. The ulama, or religious clerics, also began listing their grievances against the Shah, for the Shah had been trying to limit their power and holdings in Iran. The ulama believed that the Shah had made the country less Islamic and too westernized. One of the most vocal critics of the Shah was Ayatollah Khomeini, a leading cleric who had gained a large following in Iran and was living in exile in France since 1964. Beginning in the early 1960s, he had made broadcasts over the radio claiming that Israel wanted to seize Iran's economy, destroy the agriculture, and appropriate the wealth of Iran. In Khomeini's pre-revolutionary attacks of the Shah as the enemy of Islam, he also aired grievances against Israel and the Jews. 
The march to revolution came with violence, anti-Semitism, and threats of violence to Jews. On August 19, 1978, followers of Khomeini set fire to cinema racks in the city of Abadan, killing at least 420 Iranians. On August 27, 1978, newly appointed Prime Minister Jafar Sharif Imrani declared martial law. Iranian Jewish journalist Homa Sashar recounts, at that time, there was also a hidden order people didn't know about. They wanted all women and minorities out of television and radio. She had been fired shortly after this order, five months before the revolution. As the protests continued throughout the fall and winter, Khomeini supporter, supporters graffitied anti-Semitic slogans like, Jews out of Iran throughout cities and urged oil workers in Abadan to stop working on oil production for Israel. Many Jews indicated that they felt secure so long as the Shah was still in power. But with increased political violence and uncertainty, Jews began to leave. By November 1978, Jews faced increased fanaticism in the hinterlands, and they became more fear. Jews faced increased fanaticism in the Jews facing increased fanaticism in the hinterlands became more fearful. Muslim clerics began issuing anti-statements on various media. Khomeini had claimed that he had no interest in political power, but his return to Iran on February 1, 1979 marked the revolution and ultimately the betrayal of Iranian Jews. Upon his return, large crowds, among them Chief Rabbi Yadidya Shofet and 5,000 Jews welcomed Khomeini. Some Jews even held signs proclaiming, Jews and Muslims are brothers. On April 1, 1979, a, theocr a theocracy was founded with Ayatollah Khomeini at its head. On May 9, oh, this marked a dramatic turning point in the history of Iranian Jewry. On May 9, 1979, Habib al El Hanayan, an Iranian Jewish industrialist with close ties to Israel, was executed by a firing squad. The charges brought against him alarmed Iranian Jews. They were as follows. Friendship with the enemies of God, corruption on earth, and warring with God and his emissaries, and economic imperialism. Jews were imprisoned far more than any other recognized religious minority. Following El Hanayan's death, leaders of the Iranian Jewish community pleaded with Khomeini to ensure the security of the Jews in the newly formed Islamic Republic. Khomeini said, we distinguish between the Jewish community and the Zionists. Zionism has nothing to do with religion. This only allayed the Jewish community's fears for a short period of time as violence against Jews and economic and political persecution accelerated. By December 1980, seven Jews had been executed. In total, in the period following the revolution, 12 Jews were executed by the Islamic Republic with charges range, ranging from spying for Israel in the United States, supporting Zionism, corruption, treason, and drug dealing. Jews' economic position deteriorated quickly following the revolution, and many were forced to leave their jobs and businesses, and many had their assets seized by the state. Jews could not travel abroad in groups, so for many Jews, migration out of Iran was the only option. Today, 40 years after the revolution, Jews remain in Iran. So long as they are not expelled, the community seems poised to persevere. The Jewish community is allotted one seat out of 290 in the Legislative Assembly in the Majlis. While Jews are allowed to practice Judaism and vote, they are assigned a different status from Muslims and are not allowed to hold high public office in the executive, judicial, and legislative branches of government. Since 2008, Surgeon Siamak Morissedr has been the Jewish member of parliament and also works to negotiate and advance the rights of the, and interests of Iran's Jewish community. In a 2015 interview with NPR, Morissedr stated, Iran is the country of unbelievable paradoxes. The greatest Jewish community in the Middle East is in Iran, the country with the greatest political problem with Israel. Morris said, like other Jews in Iran, emphasizes that Judaism is separate from Zionism. Jews in Iran come under pressure today to profess anti-Israel views, and many do so in public for self-preservation and to remain in Iran. The Iranian Jewish community uh, 
In Iran today is diverse, consisting of secular and religious individuals. There has been a trend toward more religious observance in the Jewish community since the revolution. Tehran boasts 25 synagogues that are often full for Shabbat services. While the Iranian Jews who live in Iran feel at home, there are anti feel at home, their anti-Semitic incidents sporadically continue, mostly in relationship to claims, claims of Zionism. Okay, now we're going to turn to uh, Iranian Jews in America today. For many, the Jewish-Iranian American experiment began as a tenuous venture that was intended to be temporary. Following the revolution, approximately 30,000 of the estimated 50,000 Jews who left Iran moved to the US and the remainder moved to Israel. Acculturation in the United States proved difficult as Iranian Jews experienced the clash between their traditional interdependent Iranian values with liberal and individualistic American values. Many initially believed they would return to Iran and therefore did not invest their money in the US. Others lost their money in failed business ventures. Most Persian Jews settled in Los Angeles, where there was already a small Persian Jewish community, while others flocked to Queens and Great Neck, New York. Many of the successful Iranian Jewish businessmen and entrepreneurs who arrived on US soil had already invested their money overseas, as they had feared that their success as Jews in Iran might be short-lived. This enabled them to finance Jewish communal institutions in the Iranian diaspora, which helped resettle and strengthen the Iranian Jewish community abroad. Quickly, money and strong community institutions in Los Angeles fostered an institutional network that held influence on a national scale. Leaders of the Iranian Jewish community in LA were able to were able to lobby the Carter administration to secure the safe passage of Iranian Jews both before and following the Iran hostage crisis that began on November 4th, 1979. By the early 1980s, cultural centers, makeshift synagogues, and Iranian Jewish publications were formed in LA, and they, for and they formed into more permanent institutions by the 1990s. Today, the Iranian Jewish community numbers more than two, more than sorry today the Iranian American Jewish community numbers more than 60,000 members with 25 synagogues in Los Angeles while the community of Iranian Jews in New York is not as organized as in Los Angeles Several organizations serve as fulcrums, including the Iranian American Jewish Federation the Sephardic Heritage Alliance Inc and 12 community synagogues each community has its own slightly different culture, institutional structure, and meaning of exile and diaspora. To enumerate, that, to enumerate that watershed today would be too difficult and time consuming to count. So for the remainder of my talk, I'd like to focus on the group that is the focus of my research and the one that has created the most communal institutions in New York, the United Mashadi Jewish Community of America. Mashadi Jews have a distinctive history compared to others in the Jewish-Iranian diaspora. These Jews were forced to convert to Islam in the city of Mashad, Iran in 1839 and maintain their Jewish identity in secret for over a century. Their shared experience has fostered strong bonds that persist for their descendants until this day as a distinctive Iranian Jewish subculture. When Mashadis left Iran following the revolution, most migrated to Queens and then Great Neck, New York. The community has about 5,000 members today. In my primary research, I've spoken with many of the older generation who immigrated from Iran after the revolution, which is marked as a turning point in the community's history, away from assimilation and toward a distinct Mashadi religious and social identity. The leader of the Mashadi community narrated, narrated that story to me recently as follows. I've said many times that if there was no revolution in Iran, I do not know what would be the situation and the picture of the Jewish community today because it was assimilating. For the first time in the 200 years of the Mashadi Jewish community, there were seven intermarriages. It was very rare and very scary. It never ha even happened in Mashhad this way. This assimilation was the change that we saw in the last four to five years until we came to America. That's from 1973 to 1978. He continued, in America, 
we went again to a strict position. Although there's a lot of freedom here, the mentality of Mashari's changed. I can even say that the Islamic Revolution shocked the community. They never expected that would happen in Iran." End quote. That unexpected turn marked a religious and cultural reawakening for the New York Mashadi community. He continued, at the time of stress and difficulty, I think that people get closer to Hashem, to God, and religion, closer to the community. The Mashadis needed that. They needed the synagogue, and they needed the Kanisa, which is the Mashadi synagogue and cultural center. They wanted to come to hear lectures. There were more opportunities for lectures here more opportunities to explain the religion, the Torah, which wasn't happening in the last 10 to 15 years in Iran. In this, end quote, in this new community, religious and community institutions are an embodiment and preservation of cultural memory that helps to preserve and grow community ties. Hilda Nassimi, a historian and scholar of Mashadi Jewry, refers to the Mashadi synagogue as a milieu de memoir, a real environment of memory, or a place that functions as a living environment filled with present life that will cement future unity. Jewish communal institutions became the locus of Mashadi identity and a new covenant. While in Mashad and Tehran, transmission of memory was the role of the family. In the US period, transmission of memory became more conscious, more historical, and more of a communal matter. Mashadis created a central board for their synagogues and a Mashadi youth committee with the conscious intention of promoting collective identity and cohesion. Some have gone so far as to suggest that these ties have helped create a situation where Mashadis vanquish their own exile. Sociologist Dr. William Helmreich put the Mashadi experience as follows. In short, Mashadi homes, synagogues, and places where they celebrate weddings and bar mitzvahs constitute their portable homelands. The Mashadi synagogue and community in Great Neck created an environment that allowed its members to recreate and celebrate a distinct Persian Jewish identity. Had the Mashadis not experienced rupture and trauma, these environments of memory would not have been created in the United States. One of my interview interviewees remembers that in Tehran, Mashadi Jews tried to rid themselves of their Jewish accents. They did not want to present themselves as Jews. It was only when they came to New York when they started talking like Mashadis and like Jews again. This outward celebration of Iranian Jewish identity also extended to other Iranian Jews, albeit in a different way. I would like to conclude today's talk with a quote from Gina Nahai, Iranian Jewish novelist, which encapsulates the modern Iranian Jewish experience. Most Iranian Jews believe that the departure was temporary. Nearly all identified as wholly and wholeheartedly Iranian. For us, there was no dichotomy between that and being Jewish, or between loving Iran and Israel at once. The history of anti-Semitism, the constant diatribe of Jews are not real Iranians, reinforced our anxiety and kept us forever vigilant, often separate, but it did not alter our Iranian identity." End quote. The evolution of the Iranian Jewish community has been marked by integration and separation, exile and belonging. That identity has led to distinct experiences of exile, community, and diaspora, experiences that have, crea that have created a new center of gravity for different groups of Iranian Jews, a new cultural tra trajectory grounded in institutional memory for Mashadi Jews and a distinctly Iranian Jewish identity. Thank you. Thank you.